The power of emotion, the ability to couple really strong emotions with things is so useful if you want to change your brain for the better. And the way you do that is clear in the physical space. We all know this story. There are many news cases like this. Woman's child stuck under car, superhuman strength. We heard a lot of amazing stories about desperation. JJ's story was one of desperation. She's like, no, I'm not going to accept failure because failure in the case, in the case she was describing was potentially the death of her child. So desperation is a strong one and it's motiva motivated by fear. But what if you're not in a desperate state and you really want to do something? In that case, there's something remarkable. And then we should, and we should ask ourselves, why are children such great passive learners? They're not trying, they're just learning. They're coming home with all sorts of things, sometimes things you don't want them to come home with, right? It's because they have this element of play. And what is play? Play isn't just movement, although it includes movement. It's giving things everything you've got, but keeping it in perspective. It's that sweet spot of enjoying life and trying really, really hard at it at the same time. It's essentially what we all strive for. And there are these incredible cases throughout history. Famous scientists, because I grew up in a house where people, you know, revered scientists like, like Richard Feynman, Nobel Prize winner. He's most famous for bongo drumming naked on the roof of Caltech. And he became an amazing artist in his 60s. And he developed all sorts of other skills. And he always had this childlike way of looking at the world. He never let himself get stuck in his ways, never became a curmudgeon and a remarkable man. And that's something that I, if you come away with nothing else, I encourage you to do that. You want your brain to change, stay light, stay loose, but give it everything you've got.